A semaphore is like a mutex, but it can count to numbers higher than one. In fact, a mutex is more or less just a semaphore with zero and one as the only options. As an analogy, a mutex would be a key in a basket in a coffee shop that people could grab to get access to a shared restroom. A semaphore would be like having multiple keys that could all unlock multiple bathrooms in the shopping complex. In theory, semaphores are used to control access to some critical resource or section of code. For example, each time a task wants to enter a critical section, it must first acquire a semaphore. This decrements the semaphore counter using an atomic operation. When that counter reaches zero and another task tries to access the semaphore, the task is blocked and must wait for another task to finish. When a task finishes, it gives or releases the semaphore, which increments the counter back up to some previously set max value. Now, the waiting task can unblock, take the semaphore, and enter the critical section. In practice, however, you're more likely to see a semaphore used as a way to synchronize threads used in a producer-consumer setup like this. Whenever thread A or B writes something to the buffer, they will increment the semaphore by one to notify consumers that something is ready to be read. Consumer threads C and D see that the semaphore is greater than zero and know that they can then read something from the buffer. Each time they do, they decrement the semaphore by one. Note that you'll often see a mutex used to protect reading and writing to the buffer, which prevents race conditions. A separate semaphore is often used to track the number of available slots in the buffer. That gives rise to this common shared buffer pattern. You initialize three semaphores, a mutex with value one, the empty semaphore with the number of slots in the buffer, and the full semaphore that tracks items in the buffer. Producer threads use this pattern. They first wait for the empty semaphore to be greater than zero and then acquire the mutex lock to add an item to the buffer. They then release the mutex and signal that something is in the buffer by adding one to the full semaphore. Consumer threads look like this. They wait for the full semaphore to be greater than zero, indicating that there's something in the buffer. They acquire the mutex and then remove the item from the buffer. Then they unlock the mutex and add one to the empty semaphore, showing that there's now an empty slot in the buffer. To learn more about semaphores, check out my Introduction to RTOS series, where we dive into concurrent programming and get our hands dirty with free RTOS.